yeah, getting right into this thing. How would you describe what truth theory is all about and where did this all come from for you to uh, create this project? Yeah, I mean, truth theory started around 2010 and uh, throughout this period, it went through a lot of uh, different stages of evolution, let's say. Um, so initially it was more of a website streaming documentary films from YouTube and stuff like that, like these movies like Zeitgeist and uh, conspiracy movies and things like that. Then uh, I started uh, creating some articles, uh, started getting some writers and the content was more about personal development, activism, conspiracies, natural health, uh, things like that, you know. But then later on, um, it's also started, I started moving into positive content, inspiring stories, because I felt like most of media is so negative. To, mm -hmm. So I thought like, let's try to do it differently and show like the good things. But um, then, you know, from 2015, I think censorship started hitting really heavily. And, um, and that kind of influenced a lot what many websites like uh, True Theory have been doing. So I got okay, let's say I was floating above the water for a while, but then even in 2020, I got hit heavily with censorship and and I decided to make a shift because, you know, before I was like the guy hiding behind the keyboard, um, having a small team of writers and people doing content, uh, but not having my own content published because I never had time for it. I was more like a business person and stuff like that. And I really wanted to start teaching let's say sharing my views and before i was way too busy with other things and i felt like when things started going downhill because of mostly censorship you know they shut down a lot of pages a lot of the ways i was driving traffic from facebook they started declining things like that mm. so i thought this is a good time to you know try to move into my purpose let's say to become a teacher i spent like 10 years running this thing working on it educating myself when dealing with content all the time and then i thought it's about time you know let's use this period to transition into my own stuff so i started uh, doing some podcasts like you videos and other things and it's been four years now since i started uh focusing more on myself my personal brand let's say uh, it's getting so so you know super challenging um it was way harder than i thought and uh yeah kind of keep trying to uh see how i can combine uh, what i like doing which is educating people on topics related to you know how the system works spirituality esoteric science things like that and also try to make a living out of that uh doing you know this type of work yeah that's a challenge to make a living off of the truth per se it's not exactly the uh, easiest sellable thing and it might be because of what you mentioned before of the blatant censorship that we live under and you say it was around 2015 that's when the internet altogether started to change and you started to notice a difference yeah i think it was like just before the elections uh 2016 was like trump uh, oh, I see. and Hil hillary battle which you know a lot of things were the whole fake news thing started yeah. popping up because their puppet didn't win or something you know so so they had to blame it or something i feel like sometimes but uh before you know because if you look at all the independent alternative websites um there were you know 2010 that was the beginning of like even facebook pages i i remember we were posting images with text and they were getting better views than links and that was like memes you know now yeah. it's obvious but at that time like 14 years ago these were new things so 
there were a handful of websites uh, at that time, like Collective Evolution was one of these websites. Activist Post, I think, came a little bit later, or whatever. There, there are like a couple of these independent alternative activist type websites. And it was uh, Wild Wild West. You could post what you wanted. No one yep. said anything. We could talk about 9-11 attacks all the time, make <laughs> yeah. sure, sh talk, you know, show documentaries. They were all available, everything. But uh, at some point, um, things started changing. I feel like, uh, you know, it started to become too big. It's too many people started uh, getting awakened, let's say, because of social media and the powers that be, let's say, try to use clever campaigns to uh, restrict information by labeling it as some kind of conspiracy or fake news or whatever. So I feel like the, the shift started around 2015 or something more or less. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then it hit hard like 2020. Uh, that's oh, yeah. like when a lot of things just disappeared. Yeah. And we're still in it. That's the thing. We're still in it. It's this weird time where it's uh, the Internet is curated for us. It's not the wild, wild west. It's not the good old days anymore. I remember those days, man. It was completely different. It really was. It, same platforms, the same technology for the most part. But what was shown to us wasn't really curated. It was sort of what you wanted to follow. And it was on a chronological timeline. It wasn't, um, there was not really an algorithm. You know, the algorithm controls everything. It controls all of our minds. Back then it was, you had all of the power and what you wanted to see on the internet. So that's the big difference. That's the censorship is that they can control, they as in the literal platforms that we use can control what we see. And it's pretty easy to do. And it's actually blatant. You know, it's not like they're really trying to hide it. I feel like for the most part, everyone knows that they're doing this. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's really nothing that we can do about it because what are the alternatives? There are some alternative websites like Rumble and mm. uh, you can even say Truth Social if you want to even go there. And <laughs> just there's there's what I'm trying to say is there's other alternatives that we could use, but we've been so inundated into things like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We've been using them since 2010 and even before that that it's very hard for us to make the transition into those other platforms. So it's like we kind of, at this point, have to play along with the censorship. You know, it's like there's, what, what's the other op option? If you really want to get your word out, if you really want to have yeah. a voice that other people will hopefully hear, is there any other option other than sitting on the street corner with a megaphone? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like... Um... You know, maybe now it's it's not as bad as it was a couple of years ago with censorship. I feel like yeah, they've it's... toned down because people really got um they really got aware of it. At first, it was like it, what are they doing? And then we figured it out, and now they're like they're still doing it, but it's not so blatant. But I still feel like it's going on. You know? Yeah, you know, on YouTube, I'm hearing stories where people have their channels removed and things like that, but. Mm -hmm. I feel like also what's happened with Facebook. Facebook was um, really popular. And then because of TikTok, because of some of the backlash as well, people said like, fuck you, you know, and stuff like that. And uh, they lost half of the traffic or something because I used to look at statistics of Facebook. And I remember they had like 30 billion page views a month or something and went to like whatever 15 or something over a year or something so mm -hmm. you know once they started losing fan base i feel like because of tiktok and some other issue and people had a lot of issues they be, facebook became like the second thing that you it wasn't so cool anymore and things like that i feel like they toned down when you know f people started fleeting <laughs> yeah because that was annoying you know to have like content removed and things like that so now it's it's not as uh, hardcore. Uh, yeah, but, you know, all these platforms like Google is doing it as well with search results oh, and yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. One of the biggest things I've noticed with Google and how it became different from, say, 2010 to now is when you search, especially hot topics, all the top results will be from the media sites, <laughs> right? Like, when do you ever get a result, say, from truththeory.com as your first result? Not like that anymore. If you search any hot topic, it's going to be from ABC, MSN, CNN, MSNBC, all of those things that are trying to curate a story and a narrative for you. And uh, whoever goes to the second page, <laughs> right, to see the other results, it's pretty rare yeah. to do that. That's why I would recommend use Brave Search or uh, DuckDuckGo. But even those, I feel as though, are curated in some kind of way. So it's tough, man. It's tough because uh, it's just so prevalent in all of the platforms that we use. But I do think it still is possible to navigate through the curation and navigate through the censorship of the world that we live in today. It's also so blatant. It's easy to see how fake it is. Sometimes it's so in your face. It's like, come on, man, you're really trying to pull that one. <laughs> you know, it's like, come on. But some people still fall for it. Yeah, no, there are, I think, vast majority or, or a lot of people, they're going to go to Wikipedia and this is mm. where they do their research. And mm -hmm. if we, Wikipedia says this or that, they're not going to look into anything else. You know, for you and me, people who are really uh, looking to information for many years, let's say, and understand how this stuff works, this is pretty obvious, but I... When we get out of our bubble into the matrix and see how an average person thinks, even though there are a lot of people who are awakening, let's say, um, I still see that probably majority is uh, kind of asleep, you know, let's say more or less like I, I hear people like, oh, you know, if this would be true, then uh, scientists would already know that because they're doing all their research and they, you know, some alternative healing or whatever, or yeah. something of this uh, type. And uh, from my perspective, someone who looked into both sides of the story, I see that this doesn't have work like that. You know, it's uh, very often uh, they're not going to look into something or they don't have the system or they have some other reasons why they're not going to say that this works or whatever, you know? Yeah, man. So, uh, yeah, the more I kind of, I spend a lot of time on looking into like the nature of reality, let's say, and I realized that most of the things in this reality in society are illusions um, yep. to some extent, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the big difference between someone who is awake and not awake, per se, is being able to think for yourself or not and discern for yourself or not. If you're not awake, most NPCs, we could say, let others think for them. They let either the religion think for them or the scientists or their parents or their friends, and they go off of that. But a truly awakened being, I feel, is one that is able to navigate the illusions and find the truth in the world, despite the illusions, despite the countless illusions that are thrown at us every single day. An awakened being has that sovereignty within, and uh, that's pretty much it, is able to stay on that wavelength no matter what happens. How would you describe that, actually? Let me ask you. What do you think is the difference between someone who is awake and not awake, if we could describe that? Um, yeah, I feel like we have different levels of awakening, let's say. Um, yeah. So an average person might be questioning, oh, these politicians are lying probably about something because, you know, they know they've been lying in the past and uh, people get a little bit suspicious. But... I feel like um, there are levels, let's say, to it. And, uh, you know, like maybe realizing the nature of reality on a very, very deep esoteric spiritual levels, that kind of 
seems like you are probably awake, like you really know what's going on, what is the nature of reality, that you are living forever, everything is one consciousness, you know, this is just the game of polarities and things like that. So that's probably like deep awakening. Um, yeah. But you have different levels, you know, let's say people who are questioning governments or uh, things like 9-11 or whatever, this is like uh, some level of awakening, let's say, mm -hmm. or like that the food is uh, toxic or any other things like that. Um, but, you know, the problem that I see is that because of repetition and because I guess of how the human brain works and everything, people get easily programmed and yeah. Um, even, you know, for me who, let's say, try to deprogram myself and through research, through self-evaluation, all the other things, I still get caught up in programs sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, if someone has no understanding of any of this stuff, they are just following programs all the time. You know, the yeah. media says this and uh, that the guy kind of sounds like he has authority, knows what he's talking about, and they're gonna listen to the yeah. expert or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, or like the, the scientists tell us there is no extraterrestrial lives, whatever, we are alone most likely, and, and people are like, Yeah, you know, there is no evidence, but the evidence is everywhere, you just don't look at it because you take it from mainstream uh information sources. And people are not even willing to question these things because the program is just sounding, you know, repetition. And, and that's the thing they're faced with all the time. So they become kind of like programmed drones in a way, you know. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like these people are intelligent, you know, they have like good jobs, uh, good careers and they still are not being able to question things um so so you know the i see how how hardcore the programming is uh, i want to give you some example of that because uh, this is like something that i feel like people don't understand that you know they say maybe bruce lipton someone says that most of our behaviors from subconscious mind which is like you know, subconscious get programmed through society, through uh, media, through all these things, what's going on with you in a childhood, things like that, right? But actually, um, you know, uh, I was watching this guy called Darren Brown, who uh, he has this, he actually has a cool new show on Netflix, and he is like this... Uh, illusionist let's say a guy who is basically like doing some uh, hypnosis and uh, tricks and using a lot of clever techniques to do a show so he sometimes does these shows where he takes a subject like an average person and uh, the person doesn't know what the show is all about and then they he's gonna try to like use some kind of techniques subliminal messaging whatever to hypnotize the person mm -hmm. without them even knowing what's going on to get to some results. And he has this show, which is pretty old, like it's called Heist. Um, you can still find it on YouTube, Darren Brown. And um, in this show, he takes a group of average uh, people who work in a corporate, corporate world. These people, don't really fully know what they're gonna take you know what it's gonna be about like the whole thing and um, he gives them tasks and there are always like hidden cameras you know so they maybe don't know they're being watched or whatever but basically he gives them these tasks where um he they have to do something immoral uh to kind of he just programs that to for them to do something let's say immoral becomes easier and easier and easier with each task so in a one of these tasks for example every one of these people has to go into the grocery store and steal an item 
and you know there's a hidden camera there the owner of the store knows about the whole thing but mm -hmm. they think they're stealing the item and so he's like giving them these tasks and uh you know slowly slowly programs them they they are not fully aware of what's going on and at the end of the show there are like three people left or something who are the most susceptible to these suggestions and um they all the time walk with like a fake gun you know like a plastic gun next to or like in the you know wearing them and and these two i think two of those out of three i'm not sure I, I watched it a long time ago basically what they do they try to rob a car delivering money to the bank you know there are like security guys pulling out the money and and the guy is just walking and suddenly something turns on and he just pulls a gun and tries to steal the money and wow. and then the, the camera people because it's all like hidden he doesn't even know he's being recorded they all jump and try to like hey what's up why did you do it and they're like in shock right so what he did this guy darren brown he hypnotized these people to become criminals and they were not even aware of it how it happened because yeah. he just gradually co is conditioning them with some kind of immoral activity and using some other trickery and then they become criminals who are like you know like programmed robots mm -hmm. uh becoming uh, you know thieves or something and i think this is a great example of uh you know how your brain works what's possible with programming so now imagine if you are born into a world where constantly you are being programmed with what to think how to behave what is good what is not a lot of these programs are unethical you know like from let's say music industry to television to like school system to like what is right what is wrong well, it's everywhere yeah and then uh, people really are not even aware that mm -hmm. they're walking like robots basically yeah man because uh everyone else is programmed so it's almost like we do it to ourselves too you gotta wonder where this all comes from you know and you could say this is somehow a cabal is involved and maybe so but at this point, I feel as though we're doing the programming to ourselves. And if you step out of the programming, then you're the black sheep of the herd. And no one wants to be different like that. You know, yeah. you get chastised. So at this point, it's like, you got to be cool, man. Don't you want to be cool? But being cool is being degenerate, essentially. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's weird. You know, I don't even think, I think there is a cabal. I think there are the dark forces at play, but I don't even think it's like all them at this point. It's just like it's those kind of mind viruses have been implanted in our heads probably generations ago. And now they're so prevalent. It's so hard to deprogram out of that programming. And it's interesting because the Darren Brown technique is called NLP, Neuro Linguistic mm. Programming. <laughs> it's literally called programming. And, uh, yeah, I recommend anybody listen, um, watch Darren Brown because he's awesome. I, I'm also a fan of Darren Brown and his work. And he just showcases how easy it really is to put these ideas and, uh, just different ways of seeing your world from an outside point of view. And it's all through like, it's like magic, but not magic tricks, like with a card or anything. It's like magic through your words, through traditional magic, through using spells, casting spells in that sort of way and how one speaks and when it is spoken. And uh, he also uses visual cues too. They're like subtle visual cues in the environment I've noticed in some of the things that he's done. Mm. So it's like all these ways that we're programmed that we don't even know how we're programmed. It's unconscious, unconscious. And it also touches upon our subconscious. So all of this programming is, it's blatant to us in some regard, but for most people, it's just regular life. <laughs> this is just how life is. 
And uh, essentially, that's the matrix. You know, you don't know any different until you take the red pill and you see outside of all of the programming. And yeah, man, like you said before, I'm still susceptible to it for sure. I think that's the journey. That's the path here. That's the spiritual path altogether is being able to fully deprogram ourselves and fully liberate ourselves from the illusions of Maya. But the th difference with us is once you see outside of it, once you take the red pill, you don't really go back. You know how to deprogram yourself, I can imagine, in a very quick and efficient way, right? You, you know the practices, you know, uh, you know what's right and what's wrong, even though sometimes you may dip your toes in the water of illusion. I'm guilty of it. I'm pretty sure we're all guilty of it. But you know how to easily tune yourself back, right? And get back on the wavelength of truth. Do you agree with that? Um, I still had like, uh, so some of the programs I had very, very, very hard time to uh, get out of. And I feel like I'm still confused sometimes. So one of the things that it really helped me was psychedelics because mm -hmm. with some of the states that I was able to get into on psychedelics, I was being guided there and I would get into like higher versions of reality where, you know, once you're there, you know, this is the real deal. Like mm -hmm. here comparing to there, it seems like nothing. So, you yeah. know, that you've been shown that to wake up, you know, that th there is a higher truth you know higher reality and all these things so i was kind of going through these experiences and one of the things i was always getting um is to really watch out for materialism because like yeah. from what i understand and from what i've been shown and explained like the whole if you look at really the one of the biggest um let's say control mechanisms here is like this whole capitalistic system which enslaves people in a way where you know they keep working hard chasing dollars in the process they release a lot of negative emotions because like you know they either fight or flight mode all the time or greed or ego or whatever so this is kind of let's say gets uh, entities negative beings to feed off on top of that, all the materialism and capitalism destroys the planet and resources, which destroys the organic life, which is again, you know, the, this energy gets uh, its assistance for these negative entities. And then there is also an aspect of that we polarize ourselves with every, um, you know, action. So the idea of polarization is like you can be service to self, service to others. This is like from the law of one, but basically, so so people through this system, whether they are supporting a system, you know, they build a system, they're actually being programmed to do it, to think this is a success and this is how yep. you should act. Uh -huh. And they're like building this whole matrix themselves and polarize themselves and generate emotions and things like that. And, you know, and uh, I was being kind of shown like, that this is really how like the humanity is enslaved and and things like that and uh, still when i'm here and i feel like i need to be doing that because uh you know if not i don't have food and mm -hmm. other things exactly so so i get confused like you know we are being from programmed that these people like Musk or heroes or bezos or whatever but actually when you really look into how they do these things no, it's quite the opposite. Like there are, you know, ruthless uh, leashes that are just taking advantage of everything as much as possible and trying to appear as saviors to the public and all these yeah. things. So this, there, it's so tricky because a lot of things like we look at people as heroes, actually, you know, very often are quite the opposite. Almost like everything here is seems the opposite. <laughs> so if you're yeah. if you're like living in a fake reality, then every like anything that is normal seems so odd because this is what you are used to. You know, it's like think about food. Like if you have uh, organic food, which seems to be like the natural food, let's say, seems like something 
kind of hippie or yeah posh right or yeah unusual exactly like expensive or like yeah you're special because you know and everything else is normal but that's actually not normal yeah <laughs> yeah and, that's and say like that a with everything exactly man i was gonna say that that's a metaphor for everything organic or not organic i had that thought the other day of how when you go to a grocery store i don't know how it is in poland but it should be like things items that you buy should be labeled it should be the opposite way around where everything should be organic <laughs> and what yeah isn't and organic the... should be labeled non-organic right yeah it's yeah um it's interesting like you said it creates this poshness i've had people say okay because i eat majority organic as well too as much as i can i recommend everyone else as much as they can as well and i've when i tell people that if they ask because you know eating is a communal thing to a certain extent and i say oh no i don't want to eat that i i like I only eat organic stuff. They're like, oh, they think it's like a superior superiority complex thing. It's like, no, dude, like I'm just, I'm, I'm not trying. I'm just, I'm just saying, I just try to eat organic. And it's weird too, because ah, it's just not, I don't know, man. I don't want to go too much into that, but it's not, that's not how it's supposed to be. It should be, everything is organic. And Yeah. if it's not organic, it should be labeled, right? It's unfortunate. The majority of our food, And people don't know any better. I'm not blaming anybody. You know, honestly, people have no idea and I kind of feel bad. But it just goes to show the food is like a metaphor for everything else in the world, if it's organic or not. And you'll get shunned for going against the uh, going against the crowd, going against the herd. Yeah. It's Even crazy. like if you think about love, let's say, like uh, if someone would talk about love or for other people, not romantic love, maybe, but just like um, showing love to other people or um, or talking about whatever, like this person is labeled as uh, some kind of hippie, you know, like some Yeah. peaceful, loving, dirty hippie Uh-huh. or something. Yep. And the serious guy is the business guy, for Yeah, example, he's cool. who's like, you know, steals, takes all the resources, uses Mm-hmm. everything for his advantage. That's the real success. And someone who wants to give and, you know, be kind and Yep. live low, Mm-hmm. it's going to be considered um, some kind of weirdo, you Yeah. know, lazy hippie. So Yeah, it's crazy. it, it is a little bit like like everything is inverted Yeah. and these things that should be normal are actually weird now because once we are like you know in that we we see this as normal Yeah, man. It's because our world has been taken over. Quite literally, I think we're living in the world of Satan. And you don't have to even use the word Satan or Lucifer, but it has been susceptible to dark forces. And once you see through it, you can't unsee it. We live in opposite land, like you said. <laughs> and the people that are running the show do not have our best interests at heart. That's the truth of things. It's, um, it's unfortunate, but I think that's why people like me and you and anyone listening is here. To be the example and not to like dogmatize it, not to try to um, evangelicalize it. Just embody truth, you know, to just be that shining example of health and um, prosperity within for yourself. And then it just shines through. Like you kind of have to reach a point right on this path where you don't care if anybody thinks you're weird or you're a hippie or they think you're strange for eating all organic. You kind of have to with that sovereignty that I talked about before, you kind of have to. Step one, not care about what anybody thinks. <laughs> That's a huge part Yeah. of the path is just you have to sort of tread it solo. There are others out there. As Timothy Leary says, find the others. And that's what we're doing here. That's what you do. That's what I do. We find the others. We're creating these online communities and in person, of course, as well. But it's still very scattered at this point. You know, it's not the majority. So it's sort of the hero's journey at this point to... I was going to say go against the grain, but it's actually not going against the grain. It's the grain that has been created for us. You know, it's the grain that we've been conditioned into the narrative, Lucifer's world, go against that. But when you go against that, you actually go with the so-called truth within. And it actually is not 
aligned with entropy. It's actually more aligned with momentum. It may seem harder, you know, it may seem like, oh, it's, just, it's me against the world. But it's actually quite the contrary because you have these other forces on your side. You have love on your side. You have God on your side. And mm -hmm. with that, uh, you have all the power in the world and nobody can really tear you down. It um, may sound, may sound hippie-ish <laughs> to anyone that doesn't know any better, but it really is the truth, man. This, uh, when you start to work with the light, the light starts to work with you. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I feel like, like the darkness is never happening without some level of consent. Like people yep. are choosing that because of their own greed, selfishness, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you start, let's say the the biggest, I feel like to be, you got to become the change. Let's say as much as you can. Obviously, not not easy in this world, but. When you start shifting with your intentions, you know, how you treat others, how you, uh, what are your main values and things like that. You try to be more balanced, more, um, let's say, uh, loving, whatever. You work on yourself, try to heal all the shadow aspects, all these things. The, at some point, maybe initially it's not going to be like that, but at some point, if you do all these things, Correct. Like sometimes also like people, what they do, they, they want to be good to others, but then they give more to others than to themselves. And then yeah. they attract people who feed off that. Yeah. So that's also something to watch out for. You have to have your boundaries as well. But basically, if you like follow some of these things sooner or later, like you start attracting the right people the right uh jobs the right kind of vibes the right the, the reality shifts around you mm -hmm. and uh, even though these things might be happening in the world or over there like they are not going to be impacting you as much or or very little yeah so you are literally shifting to a different version of reality and yeah. um i feel like uh this is like really important for people to think because people get angry about the elite or whatever you know out external outside of them and uh, first of all like if you if this triggers you like that's not good you know you, you have to be aware of these issues but then you know don't allow them to like take over you or influence your mood or whatever and uh, think about solutions and also mm -hmm. and another thing is you know really like focus on what you can change which is like your closest environment in yourself yep. like i see even like things simple things when i work on myself let's say do some exercises uh, i become interested in some of the things i become happier and things like that other people like neighbors are doing similar things or like my mom is getting motivated to do something whatever you know so it's like you you kind of affect these people as well with just changing yourself and yeah. working on your, yourself yeah, man. so there are many many aspects to it you know we attract things we shift to versions of reality but also we kind of create this ripple effect and we affect how others behave as well. Yeah, I agree. Well said. It's contagious in that way. It seems to be. The yeah. saying that one of my friends used to always say to me, he said, love brings love. You could say light brings light, good energy brings good energy, like attracts like. I mm. think that's true to a certain extent. I don't know. There's just something about somebody, you know, when you're in the midst of somebody that's just positive, right? You can feel it off of them. It's resonant. And uh, I think that's, I don't know, there's just something true about that. And we don't even do it for the resonance. So you, you do it for yourself and it just kind of is naturally shows and glows to others. And um, I guess it's up to others to be able to use that as an example or not. That's the thing. Like we said, you can't evangelicalize this thing. You evangelicalize it for yourself and that's it. Um, you know, like you said, the darkness we give permission, but we also can give permission to the light. And uh, it's pretty easy. <laughs> Other people that are glowing themselves, I feel as though make it easy. There's not a lot of examples, but it's more about quality than quantity. 
at this point in terms of light workers, if you want to call them that, use that term, that buzzword. But they're out there. We're out there <laughs> doing our thing. And uh, yeah, man, what do you suggest? Let me ask you this. Do you have any like certain practices or modalities or just lifestyle changes in general for one to align themselves to uh, the good vibes, the good energy? Um, so one of the things, you know, this is sometime, let's say teaching a little bit, uh, I have actually an online course on that as well, which is like, um, it's on truefear.com forward slash Academy. It's, um, it's called X the matrix, you know, I call it this way, but basically one of the big things about it, because it has a lot of things, but is is that i talk about imbalances so imbalances are like shadow aspects let's say you know so you probably heard about jungian yep. shadow work and shadows and so think about like i like to use the term imbalance because imbalances are basically everything out of balance and all these things are out of balance and so anything in yourself that is out of balance which could be for example, you know, someone is a chronic complainer, someone is addicted to something, someone is uh, maybe striving for power, has like egocentric behavior, is perfectionist, um, you know, things like that. Let's say anything that could be a workaholic, anything that's out of balance in yourself, um, that always affects whatever reality you manifest and attract. This is a really important because these things that we manifest, create, attract, jobs, people, um, you know, circumstances, whatever, they are a reflection of us very often to some extent. So this is a very important thing. One thing is that those imbalances. Second thing is what are our intentions, right? So. Mm. Like anything you do, you have some intentions, um, you know, maybe like you want to help someone, but do you want to help this person because you want, are expecting something in return or, you know, you want to help that because of like, you want to just help them and you're a loving person, whatever. So think about your intentions behind things because we can have different types of intentions and these intentions are like glue, you know, they, they form attraction patterns. So let's, and then your imbalances are also, uh, you know, formulating what you attract. So, so let's say, let me give you a couple of examples. Um, like, you know, someone I, I know, she is was looking for a romantic partner, whatever, but this person, this girl, she's a chronic complainer, has a little bit of neurosis, things like that. And uh, she has superficial intentions when it gets to attracting a person or finding a partner. And superficial intentions are like she's interested in someone who is wealthy. You know, it's like thinking about money as a main characteristic of potential partner, whatever. So, you know, nothing wrong in these things, but uh, I'm just using her as an example. And what happens is like because she has these imbalances that are pretty strong, she attracts someone who has their own imbalances, also like the guy who is a party guy, alcoholic a little bit, and uh, seems like not related to her chronic complaining and neurosis, whatever, but actually turns out that, you know, because she has imbalances, she attracts someone who has strong imbalances. Now, he doesn't like the fact she's complaining. She doesn't like the fact that she he has a drinking problem. So these cancel each other out because that's how these things work like we attract opposites might be different completely different but they're gonna be sticking together and because she had these intentions so he's well well off with money things like that but the intention was superficial and now he has superficial intentions towards her so he's interested in sex and her look and whatever so like think about like the reality you create is a reflection of like what are your imbalances what are your intentions and of course how much work you put and you know other things but 
this is uh, something really important. I just realized my own imbalance. Let's say I, I, I noticed my own imbalance because we often don't see them or we are not fully aware. Yeah. Um, on an example that I manifested, you know, because sometimes if you don't see things in yourself, look into the mirror, look into what you attract, and this is going to tell you what's going on with you. Because a lot of people are not fully aware of their own shadows or imbalances, you know, because they're just not normal to them. Um, so, for example, I had this thing where when I, you know, I'm so passionate about truth that if I'm having a discussion with someone and I know I'm I understand the topic better. I'm going to make sure that I'm right or whatever, right? Yeah. And and it was kind of my thing, which I, I didn't re even realize it was a problem or anything. But what started happening, I started attracting people who were exactly doing the same towards me or more or less, or my thing, this, this would cause a lot of issues. And these were like one situation was where there was a, this woman who had this uh, hypnosis method, someone recommended her to me. And uh, first time we had a call before we, I booked a session with her because you know I needed like treatment from her, things like that. And, and she had this massive authority. She's like this spiritual teacher who has a strong authority and had a strong dis disagreement about some of the topics and her beliefs, you know? And I was like, it just, triggered me completely like um and and i didn't want to deal with her i felt like she seemed very arrogant and things like that and it's like how would i want to pay her and book a session with her if mm -hmm. this is like how we had you know we vibe but i rely on my intuition and i get guidance in dreams and things like that so i was getting like i should book this session so i booked the session she helped me it was very good i was really surprised and then um, what happened was that I became so interested in the method that I felt like I want to learn that method myself and start teaching it. This is one of the more, more interesting things I discovered in the last couple of years. And, you know, so here I would almost block it because of my own shadow, because mm -hmm. I attracted someone who reflected my own shadow and I was almost like I didn't want to deal with her. I, I said, like, I'm not going to book a session with her. But actually, you know, because I understand these things, I noticed that she's just reflecting my own thing, yeah. my own type of behavior, trying to, like, be as smart as whoever has is right about whatever topic. So I started noticing, like, very often what happens is that these shadows, until you're going to heal them, balance them out, they're going to be blocking you in life because you're constantly going to be drawing that to yourself in mm -hmm. forms of other people and situations. So until you're going to work on it here, it's just going to keep coming back at you as a mirror. Yeah. You know, so, so this is a, a really kind of uh, important thing, I would say, like just to start thinking about mm -hmm. if like, you know, like I have a whole course on these things, uh, on my website truefury.com and uh, I also teach like one-on-one -on -one how to figure out what are your shadows and um, you know how to work on them and things like that so yeah mm. yeah I think an important part that you brought up is that you followed your intuition and I think that comes along the way on the spiritual path is being able to discern and make the right choices despite what the mind wants to tell you, despite what the ego wants to, to think. It's a higher wisdom that goes actually beyond thinking, it seems. It's very subtle, but powerful. And if one knows how to quiet the mind enough, to be still enough, you'll be able to hear that, the subtle whispers of intuition. And it'll be clear as day, but on a level that isn't, Mm. it's not like there in your thoughts per se. It's how to like almost judo your thoughts, you know, to almost work with the shadow. Would you say that's a part of it? Like you almost know how to work with your shadow, work with the ego and work with the mind in order to create a conducive environment for oneself 
is that the essence of it because we all have a shadow right and we all have ego in the mind that still pops up so is the work that you correct me if i'm wrong is the work that you do is being able to shed light upon the shadow and then thus not letting it really call the shots anymore I mean, the the first thing is that you gotta become aware of, uh, let's say, the shadow or the imbalance, because it's not always simple and easy. So let me give you an example. Like, um, let's say someone I, I used to work for years ago, I was working as a bartender, and the the head barman guy, um. He was, um, you know, it was kind of like he was taking advantage of the position, the, the fact that he's like our boss, let's say. So he would try to like, let's say you want a weekend off and he's always making problems out of that. And it's like, likes the fact that you are, let's say, like begging or you know, like tr really trying and things mm -hmm. like that, you know. And uh in a way, like we were friends with him, like all the bar guys and everything, but because of these behaviors, like no one really liked him fully or something, you know? Mm. But because he's a boss, let's say, you're not going to say that to him. You're going to be okay with it, more or less. So uh, for him, his behavior were just completely normal. So he didn't even see because we we wouldn't maybe show him as well like because he's the boss whatever um that you know he's having these behaviors so then he would be surprised when let's say i don't know there's like his birthday party and no one shows up and no one wants to go or something or uh whatever it actually you know? happened i mean uh i i remember like there were some situations where people would leave and they would not um uh -huh. want to be in touch with him or he would thought like something's wrong with him, them you know yeah yeah but mm -hmm. but people just maybe didn't like him or something mm -hmm. but at work everyone is like you know small talk friendly and whatever but deep inside they might not like him so much mm -hmm. so what happens is that you know he has this shadow that he's not aware of maybe because it's just normal to him all the time and it affects other people but uh he doesn't see that because uh, if he thinks something's wrong with them because maybe they are ignoring me and maybe they don't want to talk to me anymore whatever something happens or they left and um you know sometimes what happens is that in the circumstances around you you will see uh that if they keep repeating you know you will see um, your shadow so let's say like one of the typical because i do some coaching one-on-one -on -one as well so one of the popular things that people uh, have is like lack of self-love i call it you know which mm -hmm. is basically like people come and they say oh they always attract people who are taking advantage of them or you know some abusive people whatever like something where it's always like they take advantage of this person one way or another don't value their kindness or whatever and it turns out that these people basically give more to others than they give to themselves or like they can't say no because yeah. they feel bad what's yeah. gonna happen if they're gonna say no and what happens is that like they don't value themselves enough they value others more and that's reflected in what type of people they attract so and they don't know what's going on like they don't know why i went to a party and i no, no one wanted to come or they didn't respect me they didn't treat me well or you know i helped someone a lot and they completely don't value that and things like that so you know that's the shadow that they have that attracts these situations and uh, sometimes with to discover your own shadow properly like look at the results you're getting if mm. they're keep repeating all the time let's say like you're getting into a relationship and you always attract similar abusive guys or whatever or something like there might be actually something it's not like something's wrong with you it's just that you have some thing to do need to work on yeah to eliminate that or heal that that's gonna reflect in situations you're gonna try yeah yep 
Is that the end of your point? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, this is just like one of the ways how um, you can uh, discover these uh, shadows. So like first is just like becoming fully aware of the fact that you have them um, and then, you know, trying to work on them, heal them, depending on the type of shadow, let's say, or yeah. the imbalance, like you're probably going to have a different approach mm -hmm. um, to to you know depending on the i can i can give you more examples but maybe you want to talk about something else <laughs> yeah no i think that was a good conversation and i think a important part about that was the universe will always give you signs the messages will always be there and almost be repeated right you said something along those lines like it'll always situations will keep popping up the same exact people will keep coming into your life it seems like if there is an order to this whole thing an order of truth is that in one way or the other the universe is conspiring with you to align you with your highest good your highest uh version of yourself and one just has to be open enough to be able to get the message that's the essence of karma of some scars and some say that transcends mm. this life that goes over lifetimes who knows if that's true or not but that's the essence is that oh you haven't got the message yet send them another message oh yeah. they haven't got it yet when are they gonna get it up oh, send them another life send them another body <laughs> yeah it's you know it's like you know like um um the body gives you signals if something's wrong like you feel yeah. pain or whatever so it's a little bit like that yeah I feel like the universe gives you or your higher self or whatever, like synchronicities to mm. kind of warn you maybe sometimes to mm -hmm. show you things. And uh, people are blind to these things or like if they're programmed and they keep repeating something because the society says this is the right thing, this is the good thing. They just ignore the signals and yeah. then often end up in a bad scenario in the end, you know? Mm -hmm. That's a big because difference. It, yeah, oh, I, was, I was just going to say that's a big difference in one's perspective. It's actually perspective. That's what it is. It's changing up from why is this happening to me to how is this happening for me. It's kind of a cliche at this point, but I actually do yeah. believe that is the truth. And if you know how to look at it all right, it's all for you. <laughs> it may not seem like it in the moment, but in retrospect, I imagine me and you and the listener we can all think back to things in our life shit that happened to us suffering we've all we're all going through it we've all gone through shit but can you look back at it now and say huh well maybe i wouldn't be in this position that i'm in right now that i'm grateful for if it wasn't for that happening right and i think yeah. that's happened in the past and it's happening now that's um that's just the way of things that just is the universe trying to shift us into balance. This is that higher intelligence that I spoke of before. The higher intelligence is within us, but I also feel as though it's it's like outside of us. It's the same thing as above, so below, as within, so without. This higher intelligence is working with the environment and your circumstances and your karma to align yourself within, yes, but also align yourself with transmutating without. And uh yeah, that's a big part of the path, man, is being able to see that and work with the energy and transmutate the energy in that way for our greater good. But I feel as though that's um, a little advanced. I think just starting this whole thing off is, first of all, just being aware, <laughs> being able to see the shadow, first of all, and being able to see the skeletons in our closet, right? Now, would you recommend meditation for that? Just a simple meditation practice? Like, how do we even begin start to see these things you know how do we if somebody's listening to this right now like what are these guys talking about they're yeah. curious they're interested but they don't know where to start like how would you start along this path would you say i mean i one of the big things for me which is something i also teach is um you know i talk a lot about the higher self mm -hmm. and the higher self um it's pretty complex topic but let's try to summarize it quickly Mm -hmm. Like imagine that there is a higher version of yourself that is all powerful or knowing whatever. And mm -hmm. uh, it is really, there is a really higher version of you. It's like 
um, you know, it has a form, it has uh, some kind of personality, similar thing, but it, this is like your ultimate uh, version of yourself. Final And so, form. so um, you know, and uh, it's a little bit like, think about what happens when you go to sleep and you have a dream and in that dream, you project yourself into this avatar in the dream Mm. and uh you know you have a different body in a dream and the dream is a little bit different and things like that but the real you is sleeping in the bed now so imagine that the real you the real real you as above so below there is a level up and there is a even higher version of you that is dreaming your incarnation now yeah and every other incarnation so it knows everything about you everything And you can work with that aspect. This is where your intuition comes from mm -hmm. as well. And you can really improve um, you, everything in your life by working with the higher self more and more. So the higher self can uh, communicate through synchronicities, warnings, sometimes insights like glimpses of uh, information that comes or some some you know something happens like you just know or think. But a lot of it is synchronicities. And what I just, um, it, it is like literally you work with, you could think about like someone else, like as a spirit guide. So what I say, this is, I just say my higher self, please guide me and protect me, for example. Mm. So my higher self, please guide me and protect me. This is very broad, right? But it's almost like a prayer yeah. You know, because it's really like uh, you, you're talking to something that seems separate from you, but it's actually you are part of it and things like that. Yeah. And the higher self will sometimes show you synchronicities. So like, you know, you got to be able to read synchronicities. Like, let's say you have some thoughts about something and then maybe you're going to watch a movie on youtube about it suddenly accidentally or you're gonna bump into a person on the street that's gonna tell you something about something you've been thinking about mm -hmm. you know things like that um and uh, the more you work with these things uh the more you like you know also meditation helps because the more you quiet the conscious mind the rational mind the more you tune into the subconscious super conscious and the intuition so that definitely helps and i think that I see happens sometimes with these things is that sometimes you get when you need something, let's say you can ask higher self for help with something specific. But what I recommend is to be asking in a broad open term. So let's say you need a job. Yeah. So you're not going to say, Oh, my higher self, please help me to get this job. You're going to say my higher self, please help me to get the right job for me. That is, or like, you know, someone the job that I'm going to be happy with. So instead of saying my higher self, please help me to get this job. I really want this job. Yeah. Say the job that is right for me. And it's always mm -hmm. like, we always say my higher self, this is important as well. But when you open yourself to options, instead of like being specific, you open yourself to, possibilities that you you might not be aware of exist that are even better to what you think because yeah. very often we think this is going to be good for us but maybe it's not and maybe there is something different that we are not able to know and the higher self knows mm. so this is also another thing and then one more thing that is really important sometimes the higher self when you want something will um give you opportunity to help someone else first so like sometimes you're going to be giving a situation where maybe like you need something but help with something but there is someone who needs help with something similar for example and they approach you or whatever and what happens people often uh miss these opportunities because you know like we are busy and oh i'm, I'm too busy i don't have time or someone wants something from me and mm -hmm. you know bid it But um, this is how higher self often works. There's going to be an energy exchange as well. Like I'm going to quickly give you an example. Like I, I went to Costa Rica a couple of years ago and I was supposed to stay for two months or something around that. And I needed to find an apartment quickly. 
So I said to my higher self, like, I want to help me to find an apartment, you know, and to rent. And then I, same day, like I went outside, I was staying at this crappy little hotel for a couple of days and I didn't find someone quickly. I didn't know anyone around. And what happened was that, you know, I got outside and some guy comes selling necklaces and basically um, he is uh, telling me that, you know, he makes living from these necklaces, control South America, blah, blah. I felt like, you know, I don't need it, but I'm going to buy it because I want to help him. And I'm going to mm -hmm. just give it to my sister as a gift. So, and that was my intention, you know. My intention was just to help him because I thought, you know, it's nice that he can make living out of that and things of this nature. Uh, and what happened, you know, the guy told me about the landlord who was renting apartments and mm -hmm. he actually was renting one of these apartments and uh, the, this is where I moved for another two months or something. So it's wow. kind of like I'm asking, help me to find an apartment. And then he's the higher self sends me a guy who, if I would say as anyone else, I'm not interested, you know, the yeah. guy comes and sells you something and you're going to be like, no, sorry, not interested. Then mm -hmm. I would miss the opportunity to get the answer to my uh, query or prayer or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how they sometimes the higher self works that they're going to present you with option to help someone else. Yeah. But many people are going to miss that because they're like programmed or too busy or selfish or whatever. Yeah. And because of bad intentions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That all stemmed from your good intentions. And that was your previous point earlier in the conversation. It all comes from intention. That's pretty wild. That's a really good story, man. That's that's crazy. Wow. How many opportunities do you think we all have in situations like that as we live our life and we miss them because of poor choices, poor intent, right? That's pretty wild. I mean, if you're just like, no, no, thank you. I don't, I'm good. Yeah. I feel like sometimes, and you know, it's almost like it's the universe or the higher self. It's showing you like playing a game with you to oh, yeah. mm -hmm. like see because you're just a silly little human with like programmed mind. Like I I I knew this one guy who was he, he's such a interesting character for these types of uh, stories. Like one one story was for example he was like a truck driver who had a really strong. A problem with his temper like he was getting annoyed very quickly and he would shout at people like so one time he parked his truck whatever in a wrong in a place because it's always problematic for these big trucks where he's like loading the truck or something so he has to park in some place where he shouldn't and some guy came to him and like asked him to like move the car because he needs like space to get out of the house or whatever and sometimes like this guy would react with anger when they would like annoy him. But um, this time something came to him and thought like, I'm just going to be nice and polite to him. I'm going to do it, whatever, you know, and he did it and he was nice and polite. And the guy said, oh, you're such a great driver, such a polite driver. You know, I have a truck company. Maybe you want to work for me and something. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's like you know if he would behave as normal where he would shout at the guy and fuck off mm -hmm. he would lose the opportunity to get a new job offer basically mm -hmm. but yeah. something came to him like try to work on that thing that you have to heal here yeah and boom the opportunity comes <laughs> so amazing. you yeah, know man. these types of uh situations it's actually can i say one more thing uh yeah, with this guy it's pretty funny like you know um so he was very catholic and uh, he was praying to god or whatever and because of this temper issue that he had um he he moved into my house because i was renting this big house in london with a bunch of friends and people and uh, he was one of the housemates so he moved in and, you know, we became a little bit friends and then he's telling me about like, ah, oh, this, uh, the fact that I'm like exploding and have this temper issues. It's like, 
biggest problem of my life. I lost my wife because of that and blah, blah. And, uh, you know, he's telling me that he's such a believer, praise to God to heal this and things like that to help him. I felt like, God, oh, this is, you know, I'm going to teach him meditation because uh, I knew someone else before who had the exactly the same story like this guy. So both of these guys were beaten up by their dads as a child. This developed into these like snapping, angry and things like that. And the other guys are doing meditation and after some time, I don't know, a couple of years or whatever, like really healed all this, like all these issues. And I felt like, oh, wow. So, you know, you just manifested your prayer, just created a solution for you because he moved, he was praying to God to have these things fi uh, fixed. And he moved into my house and I felt like I'm going to teach him meditation, right? And then he was like, when I started talking about meditation, he was like, oh, no, no, this is like occult, whatever. Like he was like a guy from, uh, you know, a small town in Poland, a Catholic background. So for him, anything like that was occult, yeah. bad, evil. And I'm trying to like send him like, listen, meditation is a science. Like I can send you some uh, TED talks, whatever. <laughs> No, 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 this is not for me. So it's so funny because like there is this, uh, you know, this joke about um, some uh, someone on the island calling God to save this person. And uh, they said like, oh, God, please save me from this island. And, you know, the helicopter comes and I'm like, no, no, I, I want a God to save me. And then the boat comes. No, no, I'm, I want a God to save me. Mm -hmm. And finally, God says, like, I send you the boat, send you the helicopter, and you're not taking it, you know? So it's kind of like that. Yep. He prays to God to have solution. The solution comes, but he's not able to see it. Mm. And the funny thing is he's not able to see it because of his religion, right? So his mm -hmm. religion, which allows him to pray, whatever blocks him from a solution because he thought the solution would come maybe in a different form. Yeah. 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 It's funny. Wow. It's good stuff. And I think the essence of it is giving up a sense of control, right? Being able to let your hands off the steering wheel a little bit and be guided by this higher self and be open enough to whatever possibility may arise in whatever circumstance it may arise in, you know, to be able to um, just be open minded, essentially be open minded and be less egocentric and trying to control the situation. And I think with that, with a little bit of surrender, we find the essence of what you were speaking about. And uh, yeah, the opportunities always arise. I, f I find it too, to be sort of jester like. The higher self has a sort of sense of humor. <laughs> maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just you. No, but I gosh. find a, it's like a constant joke, right? My life is just a constant. Uh, they're trying to play a game with me. But it's ultimately not like a joke on me. It's to laugh with the higher self. It's not laughing at you. It's to laugh with the higher self, ultimately. And um, mm. yeah, uh, I was going somewhere with that. But yeah, it left. Yeah, no, the higher <laughs> self has a sense of humor. It's like, yeah, um, you are for the higher self. You are just like a silly little funny thing that doesn't, uh, you know. It's very. It's like a little child that you need to help. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It's trying to guide us along, essentially, in one way or the other. I feel like it's it's doing it for our best good. We just have to be able to let go of control. Like there is this higher intelligence. It's literally the higher self. It's like a superior. It's not really superior. It's not better than you, but in a way it's like, it knows better than you, <laughs> right? It's guiding, I think, all of us, every single person toward good intentions. No matter what your situation is, no matter what your karma is, I think ultimately it's guiding us to be able to choose good intentions no matter the circumstance. And that's what it was trying to show you. It gave you that story to put into your memory. Like, remember that time you chose good intentions? Well, that power is available always. 
And I think that's where it's leading us to a better discernment. And then in that discernment, a better choosing, wiser choosing in the way that we conduct ourselves in this feeble body that we have. So in the midst of our suffering and the commotion of the world, how can we look at it differently and and be able to play the character differently in the play, which thus creates a different play? You know, like what is the higher self doing? What is its motive? What is its will? If it's trying to send us a message, what for, right? Well, I think this is personally speaking, I think it's just to create a better world, create a better self, you know, as in your yourself, but also ultimately how yourself interacts with other selves and vice versa. It's, you know, love brings love, as we said. I think that's the will and the motive. I think um, this thing is is benevolent, you know? This higher self is actually on our side. We have something. It's not even something, right? It's weird. It's almost sacrilege to refer to it as another self or another higher guidance when it's actually part of you, but it's hard to convey that with words, you know, as we're having a conversation here, how else do you put it than in a subject object orientation? So for lack of better words, this other thing is leading us ultimately to a better life, a happier life, a joyous life. You just got to let go of control a little bit, I feel, and just be open to the possibilities that will arise from being aligned with this so-called higher self. Yeah, it, it kind of gives you, the. it works like a spirit guide, but it gives you free will to do whatever you want to do, but it also mm -hmm. tries to align you with your best outcomes, most, uh, you know, the highest outcomes for you. And but it gives you free will, right? So exactly, yeah. you know, if you it tries to show you the best path or like you know warn you about options that you might be choosing or something, but um, because it knows what's the best for you, but you have your choice, right? It's like if you wanna mm -hmm. fuck things, fuck things up a little bit. Yes. You like can. it's going to allow you to do it. Yep. And then maybe you need to learn it yourself, uh, the <laughs> lesson. Yeah. Yeah. It never ends too. I think that's the also gesture like quality in my life. Just when I think I got it all figured out, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm 100% aligned with the higher <laughs> self. Some kind of joke will come my way and, and, and uh, remind me and humble me into the... Uh, aspect of realizing that maybe I don't got it all figured out. <laughs> maybe I still got some work to do here, you know, work in progress. But as they say, another cliche, the journey is the destination. And I think uh, that's okay. You know, I feel as though a part of this path, also what is important is a sense of forgiveness, is being able to also remain human, staying balanced in that, knowing that, I, I feel like we talked about this in our previous conversation, but it's being mm -hmm. able to also remain humble in that we have our faults, like knowing that just because we are aware of a higher self, a higher reality, um, guidance that has some sort of wisdom on our side, you just got to tap in, yada, yada, yada. That doesn't mean it happens overnight. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. So there's this sort of balancing act, a sort of dance that we have to play between our humanness and our holiness our animal instincts, and the higher guidance. And how can we tread the middle way, you could say, between both camps in order to stay balanced? Yeah. And uh, that's the dance, man. That's, I feel like, uh, that's what it means to be human, you know? That's the experience yeah. that we're, we're doing here. Everything, I feel like it's about balance, really. Yeah. Um, so it's, um, you know, if you think about, like, you want to be a, good person let's say whatever but everything you touch uh, comes from some suffering or something you know so yeah. if you would want to be a good person you would probably have to lock yourself in a cave and live in the cave but that's not <laughs> yeah. not what you came here to do like you mm. came here to have a human experience experience a little bit of everything create something help in the creation process impact others and you work within the system you have um available so 
it is about like keeping it at the balanced levels to not go too far, not get too cut up, not be dragged by this uh, parasitical aspect of the system, whatever, right? But still take advantage. Everything has like good and bad in, mm -hmm. in itself, right? Like if you look at Facebook, or you could say, so evil corporations censoring and, you know, hosting some garbage uh, for which is basically just getting us addicted to watch some mindless crap. Mm -hmm. But it's also connecting us with new people. Uh, other types of information are also there, which helps us sometimes. So it's kind of, uh, you know, it's a tool that gives you two different options, right? So it's mm -hmm. kind of like with everything, you have good and bad, and it's about balance and how you, you know, work within what you have available and yeah. things like that. Amen. Yeah, it's knowing how to utilize all the tools at our disposal, all of the material world that is uh, at our fingertips. It's being able to use it so it doesn't use us. That's the thing. You either use it for your best advantage or it uses you. You either create or consume, right? I know what camp I like to be in, but I'm not going to lie. I get lost in consuming sometimes. <laughs> well, what we're doing right now is creating. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like we can use this to reach the world or it can use, the world can reach and use you. It's, um, it's peculiar in all facets of technology. It's like, how do you want to go about transmutating this? You could look at it as dark, like you said, or you could look at it as um, another obstacle, another part of the play, another part of the game to transcend and utilize to your best advantage. It's all perspective. It's all perspective, especially with social media. It's all perspective. Yeah. Well, yeah, man, I think we're on uh, I think we're on the right side of using this, you know, and I'm thankful for people like you out there that are utilizing this for something other than degeneracy and debauchery of the human soul, the human spirit. So, yeah, man, uh, I think. Do you have anything else to say? There might be a good note to wrap it up at. Do you have any last words for the pod? Anything you want to get off your chest? Yeah, I just, uh, I think I want to always say, like, really to not be so angry about what's going on out there mm. and um, focus more on yourself and uh, working on yourself, like yeah. becoming a better father, better husband, better uh, son, better person to your neighbor, whatever it is. Um, and work on like healing these different aspects of yourself and think about like the intentions when you do things. So really like just and be in balance as much as you can. And, uh, you know, like just just work on yourself. And this is the key, because when we do that, um, you know, this we shift to different versions of reality. So even if like, what's going on outside and it seems like evil, whatever in Palestine or something like, you know, you're going to be experiencing your own version and uh, it's probably not going to be affecting you one way or another. So, so like, this is the most important it's to work on ourselves um, yep. and uh, be in balance on every level as much as possible. And uh, yeah, I guess that's that's like the final message. And uh, if you want to check out like some of my stuff, like True Theory or Mike Sibula on social media, and uh, I do one-to-one -one coaching if someone wants to book an introductory session, get in touch with me and things like that. Thank you, Gar. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate you coming on here and sharing your time, effort, and wisdom with me and the listener. And if anybody did listen to the song, I encourage you to listen to our conversation on your channel. I think that was another good one. Touched on a lot of good topics. But on the note that you just said, I think it was pretty powerful. It's all about you. I think every teaching is just a reminder 
If it's a valid teaching, it's just a reminder for you to come back to you. If it's not, then it's just a distraction or it's a half truth. Really, any truth that one can convey is a pointer back home, back to you. <laughs> right? There's plenty of pointers. The finger and the moon analogy, right? Mm -hmm. Don't mistake the finger for the moon. Every teaching is for you to come back to you, come back home. If it's not, like I said, run the other way. And uh, yeah, man, on that note, um, I thank you for coming on here and being a reminder for me and anybody else. Keep doing your thing. I wish you all the best. And that's it. Peace and love. Yeah, Peace thanks. and love. Thank you, guys.